just want our freedom. We're proud to celebrate Black History Month. We deserve it. Honoring those who contributed to this country. We're proud of what we have done and will do. Celebrating Black History Month. If we want a better future, got to stand today. KPRT and K291CN Kansas City. Gospel 1590 106.1 FM. It's 9 o'clock a.m. Welcome to the Morning Glory Show. Turn your volume up and let the word to God pierce your soul. 1590 a.m. on your radio dial and 106.1 on your FM, pal. Thank you for tuning in to the Morning Glory radio broadcast with Drs. Adam and Adrian Blackstock of Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Sit back and get ready to receive a word that will transform your life. Good morning, good morning, radio family. It is a blessed day, amen, here in the greater Kansas City area. I'm looking at the beautiful sunshine. It's in the 30s outside, but the sun is shining. The birds are chirping. So this is a day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is going to be a power pack message. Amen. I have a word from the Lord um, as relates to the church. Amen. But there are some announcements, some um, national announcements and by your Christ announcements. Uh, June, um, starting on the 17th, 52 days of prayer, right? 52 days of prayer. Uh, where we are asking leaders and churches to join us for 52 days of repentance and prayer for our cities. Each church will cover the zip code in which they are located in prayer for 52 days as Nehemiah did. God has given each church an angel and a ram of authority in the earth, so let's put them to use. Amen. So that will go right up until Resurrection Sunday. You can find this posted out there. You guys posted out there on Facebook for me. I don't know if you can post inside um, the Facebook um, live right now, but this is the opportunity because revival is taking place. We have revival that people are coming, that's over in Kentucky right now at Asbury at the college. This is the last time it happened was in 1970. So we need to tap in in the name of Jesus. This is what we need. Repentance brings revival. We need repentance to take place, a revival to take place in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls, and it will transform your family. It will transform your city. It will transform your state, and so that we can take the USA for an awakening. I'm excited. You can go and tap into um, the live that is going on. People are coming from all over the world to be in the midst of what God is doing. When repentance takes place, nobody has to tell you your thoughts. The Holy Spirit will convict you. You will repent. But this is a time for us to see transformation take place in our cities with the high balance and killing and all of that. Just like in reference, still pressing in the prayer, um, hashtag um, justice for AJ, Blackstock, amen. The prayers of the righteous are availing much. So things are working behind the scenes. Keep the prayers going so that these individuals will repent and turn themselves in. That is what's important, that they can repent and turn themselves in and get off of the streets, right? The word of God says that there will be no peace for the wicked. We want righteous justice. We want our, our cities to be cleansed and purified. We want to see an awakening. So that begins with us. That begins us walking in righteousness and walking in truth. Amen. No longer allowing uh, wickedness to prevail. When you know something, just as John Lewis said, then you say something. God, you should not be afraid of man. Amen. Listen, so we have, and what is coming up, mark your calendar down for 3-3. Three, 3-3, three. Three, three, a powerful time in the Lord. We're going to have leading up until that time. I want you, this is what the Father spoke to me that the 10 most wanted for Jesus. You have those in your family that need Jesus. You have those in your workplace, maybe people in your neighborhood. The 10 most wanted for Jesus. I want you to write that list out with their names on it and, and mail it in to 1126 Northeast Delta School Road, Lee Summit, Missouri. Mail it in to Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Get it to us by uh, by um, March the 2nd. We're going to be in 12 hours of prayer from 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. on 3-3. Notice the threes, which represents the Trinity. We're going to see revival hit our church. We're having revival at GBFIC. We're experiencing the power of God, but we wanted to take over our city, take over our state. So partner with God. It doesn't matter who's starting, who's doing it. 
Amen. Let's have unity. It's taking place at Asbury. Let's tap into it. It's here in the USA. Get it on your YouTube. Play it in your house. Play it in your car. And start repenting. Lead your family in repentance. This is a time for us to be before God, no longer looking at what the next man or woman is doing, but your heart to be in repentance in the name of Jesus. Out there bringing people to Jesus Christ. So I'm excited for what God is doing. Amen. And so let's be a part of what he's doing. Let's We are the body of Christ. Let's be on one accord, one heart, one mind. Let's not be distracted. The world is not going to lead us into revival. The church is to lead us to revival. So you leaders, you pastors, you intercessor, call for special prayer meetings. Call for, you know, repentance meetings. Let prayer be the center of focus. He said, my house should be called the house of prayer in the name of Jesus. So be excited about, believe, pray for your schools in the name that's in your neighborhood. Pray for yours in your workplace. Amen. So get that mail in to me. Amen. To Glory Bible Fellowship International Church, 1126 Northeast Delta School Road. Your list, the 10 most wanted for Jesus. Those that's in your family, only send me 10. Follow the instructions now. 10 is the number of completion. 10 individuals that you know that been running from God, need God in the name of Jesus. Amen. So get that mail then. We're going to have a powerful time of intercession and we're going to see God touch the hearts of people. It is our responsibility to give Jesus Christ the reward of his suffering, which is to put the soul or man or woman in his crown as a jewel. Glory. So go with me over to the book of Colossians. Amen. Uh, one, I was going here and God began to just speak to me because I wanted just to look at Colossians um, on yesterday, um, 2 and 15. He dropped that in my spirit. And however... He said to me, when I went there, he told me to go to the Passion Translation, and he wanted me to read it um, with a, a different look, not just with that verse. And God began to share some revelation. I even shared it more in depth with Bishop, amen, um, and what the Father was speaking. And we're going to tap into that a little here. We don't, if I don't get enough of it done today, okay, we got the last, the last Tuesday. We'll finish it up next Tuesday. So go with me to Galatians 2.15. And then we're going to come back up. If I need to do any special announcements, um, those of you for GBFIC, just um, text me and I'll get it done towards the end of the broadcast. So when we look at Galatians 2.15, oh, I just, and I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Here's what God do. What? Christ triumphed over Satan by disarming all the demonic powers and authorities by his death on the cross. He stripped them of their power to hold men and women, say me and you, captive to the dominion of evil against their will. See that? Evil against their will. The child of God shares in his triumph. We not only gain victory over the world, and temptation, some of you may be dealing with temptation, 1 John 4 and 4, but we also possess in Christ the authority to wage war against the spiritual forces of evil. That's what to wage war, the kingdom of something valid, but we got to what? Take it by force. Amen. So you, this is the opportunity. This is what God did. This is the reason why we repentance, we're confessing. Listen, uh, repentance is a is another level of spiritual warfare. You take the power away from the demonic spirits that have legal ground in your life by repenting. Amen. That's the reason why we see the spirit of God just manifesting that we repent of those things. Repent of lying. Repent of backbite. Just go before the Father. God, I repent of, you know, we're supposed to live a lifestyle of repentance. You know, saying a prayer when you wake up every day, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Known, unknown, word in deeds. Lord, Holy Spirit, um, convict me. When the last time you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, convict me if I, if, you know, if I'm saying something that I should not be saying, or if I, you know, um, did something to hurt someone, or bring it in my heart, even if there may be some hidden things I'll uh, reveal. Amen. That's what it means to have a personal relationship with the Lord. You don't have to have, you know, people want to say, oh, don't judge me. No, judge yourself. Amen. Many of us, many of you listen to me right now. You already know what areas that you're struggling with. 
You need to repent of them. And when you repent and then you see that you still struggle in that area, okay, don't, don't be ignorant to say devices. That means you have a stronghold. That means that there is a legal ground that's having these demonic spirits to hold that over you. Get some deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be held captive by Satan in the name of Jesus. This is what Galatians 2.15 says. Now, what the Father wanted me to give to the listeners in the body of Christ, he said, go to the Passion Translation, and I want you to read it from verse 6, right? And it says, new life in Christ. I'm like, my God, this is so profound because of what the what repentance going on and the prayers going forth and what God is saying to God, new life in Christ. That's what repentance will bring. It returns you to the penthouse. And it says, starting at verse six, in the same way you receive Jesus, our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him, with him, who is the him? Jesus Christ. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. This was it. That means that devotion to him means overflowing in the Greek with gratitude. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of trials and tribulation, even in the midst of tragedy, we still can have gratitude. We still should be thankful in the name of Jesus because we put in our trust in God. Hallelujah. And then verse eight says, beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you. My God. Here's where one of the vices of Satan. No one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments and human logic. We're going to look at that. That human logic, humanism. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgment based on the mindset of the world system. Listen, you're not a part of the world. The world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. You wonder what? The truth should set you free based off the anointed truth of the anointed one. Listen, I, and I thank God we have, I have, we have intercessors that pray, that have a prayer that we pray for, uh, that they pray for us against distractions right? The same thing, you need to rebuke the spirit of distraction. That's what the enemy you not be intimidated in, in the name of Jesus. That Aramaic word translate, strip you naked, takes you captive. So see, when you get distracted, no, stay focused. Like right now, you know, don't be concerned about what the world doing. Everybody looking at what the art is doing and all this. No, there's revival taking place. God is calling us to a place of repentance. God is calling, releasing blessings from heaven. He wants you to partner with him. He wants you to be a conduit. He wants you to be a sin where he can, that he can flow through to bring revival in your city, flow through to bring revival in your churches, flow through to bring revival in your state. Amen. Hallelujah to the lamb of God. You are no longer what a part of the world. Now we look here, we talk about this human you know, talk about um, human logic and humanistic. Paul warns us to be on guard against all philosophies, religions, and traditions that emphasize humans functioning independently from God and His written revelation. We, we don't, that's if when you hear that going on, they're not that. That's humanism. You need, and that's taught in our school system. So there's a prayer that maybe, uh, maybe next week I'll do against humanism because anyone that's been in the school system in the last 50 years, that's what they're producing. Today, one of the greatest philosophy threats to biblical-based Christianity is secular humanism. This has become the underlying philosophy and accepted religion in secular education, government, and society in general, and is established viewpoint of most of the news and the entertainment media throughout the world. That's what it says. So that's not what we want to flow with. We what? Put our trust in God. Remember the title is new life in Christ. Verse nine, for he is the complete fullness of deity living in human, living in human form. Let's get this. I don't want us to look over that. This is just, you know, leaping out at me. 
the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. For he is the complete fullness of deity living in human form. I love to I love the gospel writing with Jesus refers to himself the son of man. Oh my God, I love that. The son of man. Let you know about his divinity as God, as the Father, as the Son, amen, and the Holy Spirit. It says, and our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. Come on, you can say that. I love to read the word, but you can just make your own prayer. God, I'm completely filled with God. Amen. That's right, um, Evander's Pocket. The Holy Revival is here. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. Lord, overflow me. I was uh, I was telling the congregation, you know, I don't want just a little drip. I don't want just a cup. You know, I want you to envision Niagara Falls when you think about the, the, the vastness of the Holy Spirit. And if you get a picture, pull it up, put it in your eye gate. If you can get a sword, look, if you've ever been on a cruise, and I, I, when I get on a cruise, you just look at it and see the vast amount of water and say, and just look at the, that God is bigger than this. The Holy Spirit is bigger than this. That's how much you can be filled with. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Get that. What does that mean? He is the source. He created everything we see was created by God, not by man. So why do we want to flow in humanism? Why do you want to believe that you was created by monkeys or evolution and all of that? Rather than recognizing that God is a product and we're not a product of chance by evolution. Amen. And so when you look at that, but he is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. The head of everything. That's the God that we serve. Verse 11, and through our own, through our union with him, we have experienced circumcision of the heart. See, it's a heart issue. That's when we come before the God, we come before him, naked and not ashamed. You know, listen, what you do, we say you got, now there may be, there was one of the stories of, that, that came through the Asbury revival of a young lady that came to one of the um, officials during the revival that time at that time. And she says, I want to talk to you. And she says, I want to confess. She said, I am a liar. And he said, well, she says, yes. She said, I lie and I don't even know why I lie. He said, well, what you can do then, then go back to the last person that you lied to and let them know. She said, oh, but that's just going to be so. He said, well, you asked me what you need to do. She came back like the next couple of days later, just as happy and glee. And she says, I did what you told me to do. I'm on number 34. OMG. But she did it. That's what it means that when we repent, you know, we all, a lot of people, we look over lying. We just take it for granted. But you know, that's inside the book of Revelation said that liars and whoremongers and dog will not enter into the kingdom of, uh, into the kingdom of heaven. So this is where you personally just take that time out before the Father. You're not perfect. Let the Holy Spirit bring it before you. You know that there's some areas that's in your life that you want to get cleaned up, right? And then you want to require that. I want, I want to see families get around the dinner table, get around in the living room and say, let's repent of the sins of our ancestors. God, forgive me. With a, that, forgive me. I release all of that. Amen. It says through our union with him, we have experienced circumcision of heart. All of the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct because of what Christ, the anointed one, has accomplished for us. He cut it away. What that means? The Aramaic says it's translated that the flesh of the sin, the Greeks mean the body of the natural realm, that what? He has what? All guilt released that all guilt and power of sin has been cut away. Cut it away, God, in the name of Jesus. Release guilt. Release shame. Just say that, my father, I release guilt. I release shame in the name of Jesus. Shame of my past. Shame of, of what people put on me. Shame of what my family put on me. God, I come before you because Christ, the anointed one, has accomplished this for us. Amen? He accomplished this for us. So you don't have to carry it any longer hallelujah to the lamb of god so we thank you for that father hallelujah 
Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Glory. Verse 12, for we have been buried with him into death. Listen, you've been buried. And then what? There's a res and, and also you resurrected. Our baptism into death also means we are raised with him. When we believe in God's resurrection power, the power that raised him from death realm. Listen, you've been raised up with him. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you've been raised with him in the resurrection power. This realm of death describes our former state. For we were held in sin's grasp. You was held in sin's grasp, right? That means that uncircumcision of your flesh. But once you have confessed Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, but now we have been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return. For we are forever alive and forgiver of all our sins. So even when you die, that's what you have eternal glory. You will live on forever. We want to make sure our children, one of the things that's going on in the Asbury Bible is that they're making precedent. They got children from ages, generation X and Z from 16 to 25 to make sure they get into the chapel. They're crying out to God. Why? Because this is a generation believing in a new age, all into the, what the, 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 the technology and all of that. Come on, parents, believe that our children and grandchildren will experience the power of God in the name of Jesus. That's why GBYC, we let the children, they run around doing praise and worship with the flags and they, they praise it. And right now we got to block, we, we got like, to get a gate because A3 keep bum rushing the praise team stage, doing the praise team. And he's only, he's not even two years old. And we, can, we, we can't keep up with him. He's running to the, because that's all he know. His father, AJ, was bringing him every Wednesday and every Sunday into the house of God. He's doing, he's at transformation daycare. He goes on his break. He was used to going up on the platform. He was doing that since he was one. So when we have regular service, he don't, he don't, he's only one years old. He don't know the difference. He's like, listen, this is where I'm able to come in here. I've been coming up when I couldn't even walk in the middle of the, uh, middle of the week and, and crawl around on this platform. That's what we want. We want to see the children. We want to see even adults run to the house of God, run into the presence of God. That's so prophetic. Praise and worship. Hallelujah. We are in the presence of God. Glory be to God. That's what we want to see for this. They're the next generation to come in to stay. Bishop Priest of Message, stay hungry. Be on fire for God in the name of Jesus. So we want that. You know, we can't get some of us, um, you know, between 40 and up, we get stuck in our ways in the name of, no, I want to keep my faith like that of a child. Not being concerned about what somebody else is saying in the name of Jesus. We want to give them praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. Having the zeal of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Verse 14, he canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. Do you understand? He canceled, you didn't say that, he canceled out every legal violation. When you repent, that's what God is doing. When you come to him and confess that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, that's what he is doing. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Glory! Everything we once were in Adam, we have placed unto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. You know what I would like to have on the grounds of GBFIC? I want a big cross. I want to be able to tell people, come and nail your sins to the cross in the name of Jesus. We're coming in a time of resurrection time. My The deacons, amen. Let's We can make that happen so that people in the neighborhood, they can see the sign and say, nail your sins to the cross in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is what it's about. We're coming up on Passover. That's what the power of the blood of Jesus has done. Do you understand? It says, no sin, nothing. The stained soul has been erased of its filth. The word erase explicitly holds the concept of removal of stains. This will mean that the nature of Adam has been erased 
and the nature of Christ has been embedded into us. We are totally set free from every trace of sin by the power of the blood of Jesus. You have to know that. You have to believe that. Now, maybe you got some things, some extra deliverance that you got to work on, but you got to be able to stand in the face of Satan and say, no, I have been redeemed by the power of the blood of Jesus. You have been erased. You cannot remind me of my past. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. My past is only a stepping stone and to go higher in him. My testimony is to set others free in the name of Jesus. That's what's going on when the Asbury Revival started in 1970. All they did, they told testimonies of how God has set them free, what God has do, done for them in the name of Jesus. What it said, the testimony of Jesus Christ, we are set what, by the power of blood and the testimony of Jesus Christ, we love not our lives unto them. Hallelujah. Testify in the, in the workplace. Testify in the, in, at the gas station, in the Walmart. Hey, I used to be a wretch undone, but here's what God has done for me. Then verse 15 said, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. What is they say? Satan's accuser of their, of their brother, but he can no longer accuse you. You are a child of God. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoners. They were his. Glory be to God. He stripped principalities and powers and shamed them openly. This implies that between the day of crucifixion and the day of resurrection, while in the spirit realm, Jesus destroyed death, the powers of darkness, and every work of the enemy through the blood of his cross. All the enemy's weapons have been stripped away from him, and now the church have authority in Christ to enforce his triumph upon the dethroned rulers of this world. Hallelujah. After sending out his body, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, and the believers, they enforce, enforce his triumph to all the thrones and the authorities putting them all in public shame by the manifestation of himself. We put to shame any ungodly forces that's coming against the church in the name of Jesus, that's coming against you. Oh, and they say, I am out of time. We will be back here next Tuesday. Jesus is Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900. University of St. Mary Overland Park Campus classes starts March 13th. Learn more at virtual info session 